I would like to uh, leave the word to Matthias Svan, the CEO of Next Cell Pharma, who is the first company presenting today. The floor is yours, Matthias. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Next Cell is a Swedish cell therapy company from the Karolinska Institute, and we are focusing on finding new therapies for autoimmune diseases, for inflammatory states, and also treatments that can prevent transplant rejection. <clears throat> Our drug candidate is called ProTrans. It is a mesenchymal stem cell based therapy with stem cells from umbilical cord tissue. And we use these cells to, to, um, to balance a hyperactive immune system. This is the cause of many of the autoimmune diseases and also for inflammatory states. Um, our, uh, our lead project is in diabetes type 1, where we recently got phase 2 data. We also started uh, a clinical program in COVID-19. And we have yet another project in preclinical setting. These stem cells are the same kind of stem cells that we offer parents to store from, uh, from their own children. To, to have for the uh, f medical future of, of the baby and, uh, and the family. And we do that under the trade name Cella Viva, which has grown to be in the largest stem cell bank in the Nordics. But I will only talk about ProTrans. So our, um, our um, project that has reached the furthest is in diabetes type 1. And we have a very clear scientific rationale why this is an active treatment in diabetes. The cause of diabetes type 1 or the onset is not really known, but what is causing the disease is that you have an um, uh, autoimmune reaction towards the insulin producing cells. And there are a variety of different immune cells that uh, causes this effect. In the panel to the left, we see a mesenchymal stem cell, and these stem cells have the ability to balance a hyperactive immune system. So this is not an immunosuppression, this is an immunomodulatory effect to, to bring back the natural balance between inflammation and regeneration. And these cells can achieve this by the interaction with a wide range of immune cells. So we have a potential treatment of the underlying disease and not only the symptom. We recently f um, uh, got the data from ProTrans2, which is our phase 2 trial, where we have randomized patients to either active treatment with uh, ProTrans or placebo. And we have treated uh, patients that recently got their diagnosis they still have to have endogenous insulin production because our cells will not produce insulin. They will protect and preserve the, the insulin producing cells uh, that the patients still have. So they need to have uh, insulin production still ongoing. We only treated adults and uh, uh, these patients, except for, for the diabetes, they were healthy. This slide covers both ProTrans 1, which was our phase 1 trial, and ProTrans 2, which then is the randomized placebo control double-blinded. So neither the patients nor the, nor the doctors knew which patient got which treatment. So we measured the insulin production of each patient before treatment and compared that to 12 months after treatment. The primary endpoint was safety and also the efficacy. We wanted to see if we could preserve the insulin producing cells over 12 months. And we measured that uh, as C-peptide area under the curve, which is the golden standard. And the primary efficacy endpoint was achieved. We saw a statistically significant difference between protrans treated patients as compared to placebo treated. On average, uh, the placebo, uh, the protrans treated patients lost 10% of the insulin production over 12, uh, 12 months, whereas the placebo patients lost on average 47%. So despite that there was rather few patients, only nine completing the protrans arm and five in the placebo arm, we achieved statistically significance. 
When looking at the individual outcome, this is explorative analysis compare, or compiling patients both in protrans 1 and 2. Um, so when looking at the patients that had an increase in insulin production after 12 months, we saw that 4 of 15 patients actually got better in the insulin production. Uh, this was in the medium and high dose, as compared to no patients in the placebo or low dose. Um, putting a threshold at 5% decrease would, would be more or less stopping disease progression. We have almost half the patients that were optimally treated, uh, 7 out of 15, but none of the patients in low dose or in placebo. <clears throat> so this is a, a clear effect and it's a immunomodulatory effect. We don't see any severe adverse events. There are other products being developed that are focusing on immunosuppression. Most of them are antibodies knocking out a specific uh, immune cell. And this is a meta-analysis where they compare uh, six different, seven different clinical trials. They are not uh, the same trials, but, and it's hard to compare. But what we see here is that you achieve an improvement between 20 and 55 percent. Our uh, drug candidate uh, is performing um, like the best ones, maybe even superior to the best ones. The huge difference here is that we don't see any severe, severe adverse events. Patients in these trials are hospitalized. They might drop out of the trial because they can't stand the treatment. So we have a huge safety benefit. I will totally switch the uh, indication to COVID-19. And this is a very different disease in comparison to, to diabetes. We move from a chronic metabolic disease with basically healthy patients to a very severe state, a viral uh, infection that is acute and, and uh, uh, <clears throat> can cause uh, uh, hyperinflammation in the lungs if, if uh, the disease progress. And uh, this might lead to acute respiratory distress syndrome with, uh, which has a rather high mortality. COVID-19 can be divided into three different stages. First is a viral infection, then you have the effect on the lungs and after that you might end up in a hyperinflammation state which is the risk for ending up in intensive care and having to be in a respirator or uh, in a mechanically ventilated or ECMO. So we want to treat the patients in stage two where they have a severe pneumonia but still not are going into uh, the ICU unit. Choosing a disease that affects the lungs is uh, very um, relevant for mesenchymal stem cells because we know when we give this intravenously, a very large part of the cells will get stuck in, in the small blood vessels in the lungs. So this kind of cell therapy is optimal in, in the, the delivery system because we will have most of our cells ending up where they should be. Uh, treating the disease. And similar to, to, to our immune diseases, we also see that when we get this hyperinflammation, all the immune cells in the alveoles, in the lungs, are um, activated and uh, they will start to attack the own tissue. By giving mesenchymal stem cells, we can balance this and hopefully keep the patients out of the ICU unit. ProTrans 19 is a phase 1b trial with 9 patients that will be run at uh, Örebro University Hospital. Um, the design is similar to, to, um, to um, uh, ProTrans 1, a dose escalation, and primary endpoint is, uh, is safety. We will include patients that are uh, adult. They are in the hospital with a confirmed COVID-19. Um, and they cannot saturate the oxygen more than uh, maximum 96%. So they are in great risk of ending up in the, in, uh, in the ICU. 
So we want to keep the patients out of this. Even though the, the safety uh, part is over one year, but when it comes to secondary endpoints, looking at the efficacy of this uh, treatment, it's a very short follow-up time. We will look at how many patients we can keep out of the ICU, how many patients we can keep alive, and we look at 7, 15 and 30 days. So it's a fairly short trial. So um, ProTrans is a platform technology. Uh, we use functional an assays to, to assess these cells. So we have made a whole panel of different experimental setups where we really measure how good our cells are at, at uh, stopping T cell proliferation or expressing interleukin-6. We want to have a cell that is potent to act in all different kinds of pathways. And it's not uh, immunosuppression, it's immune modulation, which means that we have very little safety issues. We can tweak these assays to have them more disease specific, um, but the overall platform is, is essentially the same. So we make a range of different analysis. We have a selection algorithm to, to um, make the overall assessment, and this is what uh, really, uh, really defines our product. It also ensures that we have a functional drug product that can act on multiple uh, pathways, and we can do this with low variability between batches. It's robust. And this kind of cell therapy uh, is allogeneic, so we can keep it uh, as a stored product since we don't have to match donors and, and patients. We have proven the safety in diabetes and the easy to use in diabetes. And the stem cell source we use is a very st strong, potent stem cell source with the youngest cells available that we can get without an intervention. And it's a risk product, so the willingness to donate is, is uh, very high. And we can see in our clinical trial program that we have finished phase two in diabetes. We are now preparing for phase three. ProTrans 3 that we hope will bring us all the way to market authorization and we recently started in COVID-19 um, and I think I have to stop there for the sake of time. Thank you Matthias uh, for that interesting presentation. I would uh, like to uh, start off with the, with the last thing you talked about here with the ProTrans and uh, I would like to ask you um, ProTrans ProTrans is now being tested for acute treatment with ARDS and pneumonia uh, with COVID-19. Uh, do you see more possible indications, uh, possible related indications in the long run? Yes, I think that uh, the lung is a very interesting organ for, for targeting for our drug product. Uh, we are treating the patients with uh, severe pneumonia, uh, keeping them from uh, going into RDS, which is a very severe state. Um, this is a viral induced ARDS if, if they go that far and uh, coronavirus is not the only virus that, that can cause this. There are other reasons why patients will have a too low oxygen saturation and need uh, to, to be mechanically ventilated and then that kind of, of patients that have a hyperinflammation in the lungs that's really interesting for, for our drug product. So I don't see that this, this part of uh, clinical trials would end with a vaccine for COVID-19. We will have more diseases that, that uh, cause this. Hmm. Uh, looking ahead, uh, I would uh, like to ask you, what milestones do you hope to achieve in the near future? Or are there any trigger points? Yes, there are. And I actually have a slide on that because had to stop for, yeah. for time. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, we have an, another diabetes trial where we have given repeated uh, doses with ProTrans. Uh, so it's basically the patients from ProTrans 1 that were asked, would you like to, to join another trial and have another infusion? Happily, everyone accepted, all nine patients, which also show on the safety of our drug. No one had any problems with getting the therapy. Mm -hmm. So we have followed them for 
uh, another year, so now we almost have three year data on the first patient. Um, the last patient, last visit is now this month, so we hope we can uh, present top line data, efficacy data and safety data already next month. And then when it comes to ProTrans 3, which is a, a very big trial, we are now preparing, we have discussions with uh, regulatory authorities and with CROs, experts, because we want to design this trial so it will be able to bring us all the way to marketing authorization approval. So during these coming 12 months, we hope to apply and also achieve approval for starting this trial. And then we have COVID-19 trial that is uh, just starting. Um, Professor Perula Carlson presented at the National Diabetes, uh, International Diabetes Day uh, this Saturday and, and described a, a trial with uh, uh, teenagers and even younger children receiving ProTrans. So we hope to, to be able to uh, start that trial also in collaboration with, uh, with Professor Carlson. It is his trial, but we will support him with drug. Thank you very much Long for yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for presenting here today Matthias thank you for your time Thank you